All right, everybody, welcome back. Here we are for a, uh, another great game of chess going on, and uh, this one is, is, is a rematch of sorts. Uh, this time I am white down in the bottom, and uh, well, we just start off pretty basic. Uh, it's the, the good old Roy Lopez yet again. Uh, he defends it over with the pawn, and I'm like, you know what, I've been in, I've just been in habit recently of taking this and forcing a doubled pawn, so I just do it, put him in check, double the pawns up, and then I castle, which for me, that's interesting. I usually castle really, really late, so maybe part of this is me just trying to be like, yo, let's play good and castle early. I don't really have anything else going on right now anyway, so it's not like me continuing to attack is going to amount to anything. So I don't know, it's not like it's a bad move, it's just not a move I normally make. Um, so I castle early. And he brings his bishop down. I'm not too concerned right now. Uh, obviously, it's nice and defended. I can easily just chase it away at any point that I want. Um, I'm going to start trying to think of some other ways. Like, what's something I normally don't do? You know what? I'm going to fianchetto this bishop, go after him. Uh, I, I highly doubt he's going to castle to his king on this nasty area over here. Um, and I know eventually he's going to try and aim this rook down on a usually weak pawn, because the bishops obviously tend to move. Um, so I feel like this will stop that little eventual attack. I won't have to worry about it. Uh, it'll get me lots of pressure over here. Oops. Um, over here with the Fianchetto. And uh, once that happens, obviously I'm already castled. I'll just be able to start throwing all of my pieces and throwing all my pawns into this nice center, get diagonal attacks, and uh, kind of go from there. Just start aiming everything at his king side. Uh, so I'm thinking, you know what? Let's, let's go with that. That seems like it might be okay. Um, and then I don't know what this is. Uh, it's defending the... I'm not taking the bishop with anything. Why do you need to defend it? Um, it's also removing a flight square if I want to push over and you want to keep the bishop without trading. Um, you're removing that option from yourself. The bishop's not going there, and bishop is worthless in these squares. Um, so I, I, it seems interesting to me. I guess maybe like I'm, I'm, I have designs of crashing his king side. Maybe he's literally just crashing my king side with pawns, I guess. Uh, we haven't got there yet, but I guess eh, maybe that's what he wants to do. Um, so I take this turn. I'll, I'll stop that little uh, acceleration early. If you know pushes one more square, it starts to get kind of scary. Um, so I'll, I'll push up just one, see if I can't get this bishop out of here first, alleviate some of the pressure, prevent him from going any further. And uh, he commits to the trade. So it's interesting. I don't think I see that very often. I think generally people want to keep him. Um, but that's fine. Now I've got my queen barreling down. Uh, on the straight path, and I'm going to start getting all my pieces kind of flanking, going towards these center squares, and kind of attack from both sides at this point. Um, so I, I think I think I'm okay with that. Uh, he brings his horse out mostly just for development, but it also blocks off some of the space here, which is fine. I take the time to fianchetto my bishop, and then he really commits. He commits of going hard towards the queen. And I'm like, yo, 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 she's mine, bro. You can't have her. Um, and it makes me really want to think about it. There's no immediate threat right now. If he pushes, yeah, I can run my queen away somewhere, no big deal. Um, or, you know, I could just take right back, and he could take, and then I run away. But I do not want to give him this open diagonal. I think that's what he's really aiming for. Uh, I do not just want to let that happen. So I'm going to preemptively move my queen away such that if he moves down, I don't have to worry about taking it. I can just sh shut it down, close this file off by pushing my pawn, um, because otherwise I can't do both at the same time. If he pushes down, I don't have time to make two moves at once. Uh, so I'm going to identify that now, and I'm going to move. However, there's a really cool tactic here that I don't see, unfortunately. Um, the knight is attacking this pawn, uh, which is, you know, whatever. So I want to keep that pawn defended. I've already accepted in my brain that I'm going to move my queen now before this threat becomes a problem. Um, so I can move it here, I can move it here, to con or I can move it here to continue to defend this pawn. Uh, and none of those really are the best play. The best play, actually, would be for me to go all the way over here with the queen and leave this pawn hanging and make it look very enticing for him to take. And I'll show you. Well, what, I, what I ended up doing was move my queen down here, uh, and then he continues to push as he expected. Um, but what I should have done was go all the way over here with the queen, which makes it very enticing for him just to take this pawn and attack my queen yet again. Maybe he doesn't do it, that's fine, but it makes it very enticing to do so. If he doesn't take it, I just push my pawn up, uh, open up some space for my knight, and continue along my plan anyway while attacking this guy. Uh, why is attacking this guy important? Well, let's say he did take this horse, or use his horse to take his pawn. I then take him with check over here, 
and he's left in one hell of a pickle. I'm forking two of his pieces with this check, so if he wanted to, say, block it off with the queen, well, then I take his rook with check, and then I proceed to take his horse, and the game is over. Uh, if he just moves his king somewhere, well, somewhere, in, in the one square he can, and then I still just take his horse, and I'm, I'm attacking his rook as well, uh, and just, it's, it's all kinds of bad. Um, it'd be a nice little trap that I could have set if I chose to go there, um, but unfortunately I didn't see it. So I run my queen away to a safer square, and I think I see it now, somewhere between now and my next move is where I uh, end up noticing that, oh crap, wasted opportunity, and then I kind of try to make it happen again, but it's too late. Um, so he pushes like I expected, and I don't want that to happen, so I shut it down, uh, close off that file, and uh, eventually I will have gains of just pushing that pawn up to make a seal here and a seal there so that there's no alley for the rook to run through. I don't want any of that crap. Um, he's uh, he's fianchettoing his bishop now as well, putting both of ours on this line, kind of protecting everything in the middle. Um, eventual shenanigans where with discovered attacks will definitely happen, just depends on who is in control of them at the time. Um, and see now, yeah, somewhere in now is where I realize that I had this opportunity here. It doesn't work anywhere nearly as well now. It's a very ineffective move at this point because this pawn is no longer enticing to take. It's no longer considered free. I'm still guarding it. When I move the queen, he if I move the queen here from its original square, the pawn would have been free. Um, but now it, it's it's a really obvious move. You just push the queen up, or you even just push the pawn up, and then I get nothing out of it. Um, I guess, you know, maybe having the queen on the flank isn't a terrible thing, as opposed to blocking up, clogging up my middle section a little bit. Um, but at this point, it was just, it was wishful thinking. It wasn't really going to happen. Um, and it was just kind of probably not a very good play. Um, so yeah, he just, he moves up his queen, he defends it off, and then I uh, defend my piece as well, which pretty much commits my queen to being in these central square, or these central, these side areas over here in this little whatever, because um, I no longer have a quick diagonal. It's going to take me two turns to get away anywhere if I want to. Um, and there's really no positive squares for me to go. Obviously, I'm not going to go in here because it just gets taken. Um, going over here makes me accomplish nothing. I can't attack his rooks. He's just going to castle into them and they'll be connected. Um, and there's really nothing else for me to do. So. I think it was more of just a slower move, I'm making sure I defend this pawn, start getting my pieces out, and then kind of retreating. So by me missing this trap initially, it's going to take me extra time to kind of recover my position now that I ended up going for it too late. So just ugh, just not not very strong play by me. Um, he castles now, connecting his rooks. It's an interesting castle. I feel like at that point, once you've already committed to throwing the house at the king, um, and this side is ugly, I think he's better off, honestly, just kind of moving his rooks and leaving his king there in the middle. I don't know, it's whatever, he, he chose the castle, at least it connects the rooks, I guess that's a positive, um, so it removes any threat of me potentially wanting to attack them, but whatever. Um, and this is why I decided just to seal this off. Um, I thought maybe I don't want to seal it off if he ends up pushing for whatever reason, um, I just take over here and, well, hold on, let me back up. There. If, if he t chose to push eventually, you know, I could take, I've got my three pawns. It's still a nice little cubby hole for the king to sit in. Um, not quite as ideal, but it still works and frees up frees up the lines. He's probably just kind of looking for that. Um, you know, maybe if he put his rook here, freeing up the lines would have been a little bit better. I'm not quite sure, but uh, I just choose to, to seal it off, give myself a nice little, uh, nice little tent going camping, and... Uh, he now takes his time to position his rook more towards the middle. I don't know which one of these really is more effective. Uh, oops, which one of these squares is really more effective because right now they're both closed and uh, nothing is happening on these squares for the time being either. I guess he has designs of going through to the middle, but we'll see how that happens. Uh, I take this time, develop my horse, connect my rooks, get some additional reinforcements on that pawn. Um, so there's, there's really nothing that's going to happen in too much in depth, maybe some pawn trades, but no pieces. Um, and then he pushes this guy just really to limit the squares of where my queen can go, I guess, um, as now his queen is opened up to these as well. Um, and with his rooks being connected, I have no chance of doing any shenanigans of taking it. Um, it's just, this is obviously not going to work. It's just, it's, uh, it's just ugly. I, I messed everything up. Um, so now it's going to take me extra time to retreat my queen, 
so that I can slowly get back there. I think this is a good spot for my horse to go. Um, he's making a couple of weakened squares here as well. So if I can work something in in a couple of turns with some pawn pushes, that'd be fine. Um, if I put my horse over here and he wants to start trading into pieces, I think I'll be okay with that as well. Um, so it's it's kind of ugly. I'm cluttering myself up a little bit, but uh, I think it's necessary for me to retreat and get back to uh, a more home base position and, and start, start my attack over again. Uh, he brings his queen over into this open square, so he's now he's staring down these diagonals. He's really kind of focusing on this pawn, I guess, by moving that guy down there. His horse is over here, now his queen is over here. Um, I've got it defended pretty hard. Like, you're not going to trade pieces when it's got defense from a pawn and a minor piece. But uh, that's, that's where he's going for now. Um, and I continue to just bring my horse over so I can sort of eventually try and get into some of these quiet squares, maybe, is the hope. And uh, maybe see if we can't open this game up a little bit by trading pawns, which is what he chooses to do. Fine by me, let's open this up. Uh, I've kind of clogged myself in, so if I create some space, that'll benefit me. Uh, he takes it over here, finishing the trade with his horse and attacking my queen. And this is where it gets interesting. Um, this guy that I'm playing right now, uh, I had a match, uh, I uploaded a video against him a couple, whatever, videos ago, and he played awful. He made stupid moves, and there were free pieces all over the place, and it was just destruction. Both of these games are going on at the same time. So in one game, he's making a joke of himself and I'm crushing him, and in this game, it's very equal and very tactical on both sides. You know, I made a couple of mistakes, but he's got, you know, he at least had designs with some of these things, and I was able to identify them. Um, he's got, you know, his pieces are coordinated. He's playing well. So it's one of those, like, which, what guy am I playing? Is this the same guy? Is it not? Um... And so because I'm playing him at the same time in the other game and he's playing really bad, I'm thinking, look, I'm a better player than this guy. If I keep my queen, that's probably an advantage to me. I'll be better with my queen than he will be with his. Um, but in reality, what I think is the right play here is for me to go after and attack his queen in response as well. I think that's the better play. Um, if he opts to not... Uh, go into the trade and run his queen away to one of these squares, you know, maybe he runs it over to this light square and my queen can now take this pawn for free. Um, maybe he just runs it over here and that's fine, my queen was gonna go here regardless, you know, if, uh, well, well, we'll see in a second, like that's where I'm planning on putting my queen anyway if I don't try to operate for the trade um, and I'm still defending my horse and I, I open up some lines it allows me to, uh, to then push my pawn over here and attack his guy and keep my defense um, and just kind of see what he wants to do. And if he does end up still wanting to go for the trade, he takes queen, I take queen. My horse is safe right here. His is not. His horse would be where my queen is. And where is he really going to go from there? He's not going to go there, pawn takes him. He's not going to go there, pawn takes him. He's not really going to go there. I guess he could, but what is it? It doesn't particularly benefit him. Um... I just I move my king over somewhere and his, his horse is doing nothing. It's it's eh. I, he could I suppose he's not going there. He's not going there. It's just a free piece and he's not going there. The rook takes it. So really, if he were to have gone there and take the queen trade, his only good squares are right back there. To which my pawn is immediately going to then chase it away, um, and my knight is just in a better position at that point. So I think it'd be better for me to have done that and try for it. But I didn't. I, I took the safe play of thinking, you know what, I'm going to save my queen. Save the queen! It's a good sword. Um, just because I feel like I'm the better player, so I want to have more pieces. That's going to be an advantage to me. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I felt bad about that, though. I really wanted to make the aggressive play attacking his queen. I really did. Um, especially because it gave me the opportunity, depending on where he positioned his queen, to maybe get the extra pawn in, in, in the deal as well. Um, so I kind of threw that opportunity away, but eh, whatever. Um, I do have some designs of bringing my queen over here, pinning bishops, attacking pawns, and getting lots of pressure all on this pawn, um, moving my rook over, having the horse over here, and this bishop on the fianchetto. I can have a lot of pieces all attacking that one guy while attacking others. So at least I saw that, well, you know, by running away, it's not a total backwards move. I still have some places I can attack. Um, he brings a rook over just to defend and, and take the half-open file. And uh, I now go for my move over here. So I'm attacking, well, not really attacking the bishop, but I'm pinning it down there um, so that if stuff happens for trades over here, his bishop can't join. Um, I'm attacking this pawn as well, which I could, if I could get rid of it, great, then I can get rid of that one as well, um, which would be huge. 
And uh, I guess if something were to happen with this rook where it moves forward, then I'm taking this one now. So it, it's it's got some options. Um, and he doesn't like the fact that I have options, so he offers up the queen trade. Uh, unfortunately, there's nowhere else I can really go. I, running away here is stupid. Running away here is stupid. Running away here doesn't help. He's just going to take it. Running away here is stupid. Running away here is stupid. So really, that leaves my queen to go... Oh, yeah. Running away here is stupid. This is stupid. Everything is stupid where I can possibly put my queen, except for exactly where it just came from. And then I am going backward, and I really don't want to do that. Um, so I figure I can either go backward and give him that time, or I can trade queens now, and at least I get a doubled pawn out of it. Whereas, with it being in the weird position we had earlier, chances of me getting any real material weren't high. I think I just gained a little bit of tempo by chasing his horse away. Um, at least this time with the trade, I guarantee that I get the doubled pawn. Uh, so that is what I do. I take queen, he trades, and uh, now looking at it, the board's still equal. Everything's still very, very solid, but he has he's now taken a pawn, pushed it back out away from the center. He's got some ugly doubled pawns here. He's got some ugly doubled pawns here. He's got an isolated pawn in the center, and his king side is all kinds of screwed up. Um, so while we're equal in terms of how we've been playing and the position and the board control and the space and everything like that, uh, his late game is going to be ugly because his pawns are just disgusting. Um, so the advantage is, is with me a little bit for right now, and I guess I'm okay with that. I'm not nearly up as much as I would have wanted to be, um, like, you know, none at all, but uh, I, I think I'm at least I'm at least in the better, the better position. Uh, so I take some time, um, you know, his rooks are in play, mine are not, but I can fix that easily, just uh, shut down all the shenanigans with, the shenanigans with this, keep pressure up on this isolated center pawn, um, and then he kind of makes a really good move. Um, I wasn't at this point. I wasn't really looking at what he could attack me with because there wasn't really any attacks going on either way. I was just thinking, all right, let's let's activate the rook, make something happen. He goes down here with the horse, and uh, he's obviously targeting this pawn right here, which would get him a major exchange if he were to do so. <clears throat> And uh, I need to find some way around that. Now that his horse is there, uh, if I push up here, uh, nope, that doesn't work. He just takes it. If I push up here, uh, that's really bad because it doesn't matter. He just moves down there anyway, and then I block my bishop in. Um, if I want to defend it with this rook, then he just takes that pawn, and then he bounces right back. Um, so really, my only option of preventing that is pushing my other rook forward one square, which I don't hate because eventually I probably want to double my rooks anyway, um, so it gives me the time to do that, but now this rook is he's really stuck. He is stuck on babysitting duty, and that's not always the best thing. You don't want your rooks babysitting pawns at the back of their ranks. You want them supporting pieces in the middle. Um, he pushes this pawn now, and I guess he was thinking there's too much pressure on this guy, um, he can't keep an isolated pawn defended for forever. Um, I'm not quite sure what his real goals were. I'm thinking he was honestly just hoping that I didn't see that it revealed a fianchetto. Um, I'm hoping that he... I'm thinking that he was hoping it was just a discovered attack that he was thinking I might not see. Um, which you don't really want to play hope chess. Hope chess is bad chess. When you're hoping that they make bad plays or you're hoping your opponent screws up. Uh, that's never a good thing. Um, a video I've got uh, from a couple years ago in the title, or one of the, my chess matches, I, I put Epic in the title at the tagline, and it was only Epic, I, I just rewatched it a couple days ago, because I made a move hoping that my opponent would make a terrible move in response, and he did. Because of his terrible move in response, the rest of the game was like, holy crap, how did all of this happen? That was great. But if he didn't make that one bad move at that one bad time where I was really hoping then it would have been a waste, I would have just resigned, you know, game over, no fun whatsoever. Um, so it's just, I, I benefited in that regard, but it's not it's not the way to go. You want to just make sound moves. Um, so this allows me now to notice that Fianchetto, take that trade, and then I now I'm going to have a little bit more control over the center than him. And I don't know what it is with this website, man. But every time in these last handful of games, I'm thinking, okay, fine, I'll take this, and then he'll trade it right back with that piece. At this website, they don't seem to do that. I don't freaking understand. They're never responding with the proper trades. <sighs> so, I, I mean, I'm not upset about it. It's just, it just seems weird to me. I'm, my brain's processing, okay, take this, take this, take this, take this. We're good. It's always take this, and then what is that? What's going on here? Why does this happen to me in every game from this website? I don't understand. So he pushes pawn. Um, 
it's very threatening. Like, I don't mean that it's not, uh, not scary. I don't know if it's necessarily good or bad or whatever. It's very, very threatening. It's defended, you know, in long by the rook. Um, it's obviously it's threatening my rook as well. If I opt to take it with my pawn, then he takes my rook. So he's got a little bit of a trap, you know, maybe, maybe it would work better in blitz chess. You know, maybe this is more for when people have to make quick second decisions. They're like, oh crap, pawn, take it with the pawn. Oh, I lost my rook. You know, maybe, maybe he's thinking that. I don't know. Um, if I obviously just let him take it, then it's defended by a horse and I'm in all kinds of trouble with him being one square away from queening something, two open files with rooks uh, to help support it and all kinds of damage to be done. Um, and he does obviously still have this guy over here, so even if there was some perfect move where I could alleviate all the pressure and stop all of this, then he just takes the bishop. I would like to still save the bishop. Um, so I think the only real move that I have is to throw my rook up there, take his rook, put him in check. I guess I'll give him the choice. Maybe he takes the bishop now, maybe he takes the pawn now, and then I take the other rook. Or even if I don't take the other rook and I have to run back and play defense, I got a rook out of it. Um, so it really only leaves him with the one choice of just taking the trade. Uh, and at that point, I just need to alleviate this pressure. Um, but I'm also thinking, well, he's either going to push up here directly where the horse is guarding it, um, or he's going to take this guy and then I've got his queening square on a dark square where my rook is guarding it, and my bishop, if I choose to save my bishop, would be guarding both of these squares as well. So, a few turns ago, he offered up the trade, I took his bishop, he took my pawn. So, we were in an even game, he's got this ugly pawn position all over the place, it's open up, and, uh, and now I'm finally up in actual material as well as, you know, security. Um, while this is very scary and very threatening, now that the rooks, well at least two of the rooks are out of the equation, I don't think it's as unmanageable as it was a couple turns ago. Um, so I opt to save my bishop, therefore I get the, the benefit in that exchange, um, and that kind of solidifies the fact that I will now have board material superiority for the rest of the game unless I blunder away a piece, which I am bound to do, but I've been really good with that lately. Um, and also this bishop is going to have three really strong homes with all of these pawns just in this nice little uh, waterfall start. Um, sorry, track reference. And uh, it's just it's just gonna be really really strong. I, I like that. Um, so I was able to to go up a little bit in material with one of his gambits, and uh, I think I came out the better end. Um, he does opt now to take this free pawn, uh, giving himself a chance to get this queen. I don't know if it's better to have him take it with the pawn, or to have him take it with the horse. Um, I think it would have been easier for him to queen if he didn't have to make these two moves, because I got two pieces guarding this square with my horse and my bishop. Um, I guess at this point, now that the bishop is saved, I'd have a rook and a bishop guarding there, but the pawn only has to make one push at that point. So I don't know, I really don't know which one is better. Um, I guess I could just scare his horse away and then he can't defend the pawn at that point from where that was. Maybe it's harder for him to defend. It's easier for him to defend where it is now, but uh, I think in reality it just, it didn't matter. He just doesn't have enough to keep it defended for forever. Um, if he can chase my horse away, which at this point he can't, um, he's not going to take it with a major piece, and if he's trading away his horse for my horse, you know, this guy, he can't threaten it with a pawn because they're doubled. Um, so this horse is just going to be here forever, preventing him from allowing to defend his pawn as well. It's just uh, further keeping this... He's essentially isolated, even though he's kind of not. He essentially is. Um, I, I just think he doesn't have enough anymore at this point. So he responds with taking my my pawn, and I really I should have moved my horse here, my horse, my rook here to attack his undefended pawn, force his rook down there, and then I can start playing shenanigans, attacking his guy. And if he puts his rook there and I decide to attack it, he's probably going to move down here. I don't think he would he wouldn't move here because my horse takes it. I don't think he would want to go further up, and maybe he would. Um, but it gives me the opportunity then to have my horse attacking both of these guys, depending on how he wanted to defend that. Um, in reality, what I chose is just a bad move. I can't take the... I think I was just thinking, oh, I'll take the horse, I'll scare it away. I can't take the damn horse. Um, so I don't really know what that... That was just... It was just not good. Maybe I was thinking he still wants to push, you know, if he goes over there with his rook first and then pushes the pawn. It's like, oh, snap, what do I do? Oh, my God, oh, my God. Um, 
I, I don't know. It wasn't good. This it's just it just wasn't. So uh, he now tries to go after my bishop, which is totally fine. Uh, it allows me to sit on one of these nice homes that I have. Uh, he, blocking off this light or this dark square could potentially be good if I had my rook placed properly. But instead, I'm just going to go after this hanging pawn. It doesn't really mean anything. I mean, yes, it is blocking off two of the horse's squares, although really so is this guy. Um, so it doesn't particularly mean anything. It's kind of a worthless pawn. It's in the back of a double. But uh, it's just more psychologically like, uh-oh, I've got this thing over here I need to defend. It's not going to make any sort of difference. Um, the fact that it's blocking two knight squares doesn't really matter, because now that both kings are moved over to the side, and all the pieces are kind of on this board, we've sort of turned the board. Like, at this point now, here's the back of the board. It's no longer, you know, the one and the eight files. It's, you know, the back of the board is now here. You know, the front of the board is now here. That's where all the action is happening, and, you know, the middle is still the middle. So it's kind of turned everything away. This horse's best moves aren't going to be here and here. They're going to be more, you know on the other side going back to either support me or moving toward his king is where I'm going to be going next. So it's really a worthless pawn. I'm just moving down to block off space, attack it, make him think he needs to defend it, and obviously save my bishop. But uh, maybe entice him to make this push here and then give me a chance to break through with my pawn and give me something going on, I guess, as opposed to if I just shut it down and stop this. Um, then he's never moving it? I don't know. Whatever. Not too concerned. Uh, he moves this horse over now. Uh, I guess he's he's got designs of something else. Whether I saw them at the moment or not, I'm not quite sure. Um, and now I finally properly attack this pawn like I should have. And uh, he knows he can't save it, so he makes a fantastic play. Put me in check, you know? Then I can't worry about taking it for the turn. Um, there's three squares I can go to. All of them, I think, are pretty much equal. Um, if I go here, I, it's not like I can take the horse anyway, because this pawn is blocking both of these squares. Um, so it really it, it gets me off the back row, such that if he ever has something going on with the back row, uh, it doesn't put me immediately in check, and I can take time to respond um, or do something else. But, uh, you know, going here kind of just gives me space. I can't really run away anywhere. Um, it puts me in the corner, so I can't really be attacked, I guess. If he does come down, then I just pop right up. It, eh, I don't know. I opted to go uh, more towards the, the open, opening, more towards the center, um, defend these squares from the rook with my king, and just give it a higher chance to get active and get towards the middle of the board so it can do stuff. Because of this pawn that's never going anywhere, my king is not going to break out from on the inside of his little cubbyhole. He's got to leave his tent if he's going to get anywhere. Um, so I opt there, and then at that point, I also noticed after I moved, before I saw him move in response, that he's got one hell of a threat right here. Um, this pawn is a trap. This pawn is poison. Admiral Akbar's senses are going off. If I take it with my rook, he comes down here, puts me in check, uh, which his rook then is guarding those squares, his horse is guarding that square, his pawn is guarding that square. The only thing I can do is move my king right back up to here, and then his rook follows up by putting me in check on this square as well. Um, so then his rook is here, my king is here, he's still got all of that guarded, and those two are guarded, and that's guarded, that's checkmate. So I need this rook to stay on this bottom file at this point. Um, so this is, a, this is a huge trap. It's undefended, it's a passed pawn that looks very enticing. You gotta take it, right? I'm kinda scared. Um, and he moves down here uh, to put some pressure on this pawn. And if I didn't see the trap before, I definitely see it now just throwing it in my face, like, hey, just one more square and you could lose. Um, I think he should have left it over there just for the, I'm not to say that the hope that I don't see it, um, but move, move something else. Because if I fall for that, you have checkmate, guaranteed checkmate in a couple of turns. Um, and so, you know, maybe just push this pawn up here. Or maybe, eh, you don't want to necessarily push it all the way over. Maybe push this pawn one. You know, maybe start to get your king playing again and start to creep him around. Um, something else. Pushing this pawn. Yeah, you know, maybe just push this guy so it's it looks like you're getting him out of harm's way. And, uh, you know, you're, you're kind of doing that while leaving your everything else with your position the same. And maybe, like, oh, all right, save that pawn. Okay, I'll take this one instead. Um, and then I lose the game. But uh, by throwing it down here, it makes it really obvious that uh, I could potentially lose the game going on with those squares. So, yeah, sure, he doubles up by attacking this pawn, um, but that's that's not what's going to happen as take pawn, take pawn. 
So I save the pawn. Uh, my horse is guarding this square, so I don't care about if he wants to put his rook over here. Um, and then he runs his horse away, which now I'm not worried. Now this pawn is no longer poison. Um, because his horse is not here, he's no longer threatening checks with the rook, having it defended on these two squares down here. So now I'm okay to take it. No big deal. I take it, alleviate your threat, and I'm just like, ah, I can breathe easy. Your main and only significant threat really is gone. I have the other one identified, and uh, you moved your piece away from it anyway, so you removed that threat yourself. Um, and now he runs all the way back here to defend this pawn. Um, again, it's it's a worthless pawn, and but you're you're defending it, I guess. Um, and here, I, it's kind of open. It's kind of, you know, what is it that I want to do? This rook doesn't have a whole lot of game to play. Maybe I can go here, offer up a trade, um, just to get it out of the way, and then uh, give me a little bit of space with my king to move, I suppose. You know, that might not be terrible. Um, but instead, I decide to skewer his horse and his uh, most advanced pawn at this point. Um, it also completely shuts down this file with a pawn and a bishop on their nice little tag team, their tandem tactics that they've got. Um, skewering these guys. He can't defend both of them, um, so it's just it's a nice little nice little spot. He runs the horse away, kind of re-upping uh, his potential back rank checkmate over here, which for the moment is shut off, but if I take this pawn, which I've now freed up with my skewer, he has put himself back in perfect position to put me back in the trap. I have to run away over here. He goes back here, and then it's checkmate all over again. Um, so maybe it was part of his grand scheme, you know, pretend like you're running away from it for a couple of moves, and then all of a sudden it, now it's right back here, but it doesn't look like it's right back here. Um, so it was a very strong move. This guy's been setting lots of really good traps all game long. Um, there's a couple of options I really could do to deal with it, I guess. <clears throat> Excuse me. I could start to move my king out. You know, I could start to uh, just move my rook anywhere, have my rook do the attacking at this point. Um, my horse is kind of fine where he is. Uh, I could have my rook go all the way back and defend it. I don't think this is as good as this, but that's what I ended up choosing. It's whatever. So it wasn't the best play. It still works, at least. Um, and then he, uh, he finally, I think, kind of just committed to losing the game. I don't really know what that was. Uh, he, he ruins his only chance that he had of winning. Um, with his threat, even though he, I mean, at that point he knows that I identified it, it wasn't going to happen. You gotta keep it there though. I'm winning in position and material, you can't offer up the trade. I gladly take it, my horse is doing nothing. Uh, he takes that trade, and now I proceed to um, attack two of his hanging pawns at once, one of them with check, you can't defend everything. Uh, he runs away over there, I take a pawn, and this is actually where I believe he conceded. Um, I think he just resigned at this point, there's nothing he can do. Um, I guess, you know, whatever, you move random pawns and make things happen, I take pieces, I'm now flanking all sorts of stuff, and uh, you can't push this guy because I'm just going to take and proceed to advance through there, my king's going to start getting into the game, I mean, if he takes and I take, he starts running over, I start running over, you know, whatever, he just starts coming after me, then I proceed to take that guy and he can't do anything about it and then both of my pawns are free my king has been centralized so he can defend the pawns it's it's game over he's in zugzwang it was a great game he had a couple of really good traps like he had a first one with the horse over here forking my rooks um and obviously the one he had down here at two different occurrences for potential checkmate was really nice um it just it just didn't work out so i was able to stave him off this time a much more difficult game than the last one we played but uh, overall, it was very fun. It was very close. Um, I missed I missed a couple of good moves as well with that queen earlier. Um, so my, my, my play was far from perfect. Attacking this random horse for no reason. Running my rook down instead of moving my rook up at the end. Um, so it, it's nice to see that both of us played well. There was good stuff going on for both sides. And I still didn't play perfect. You know, I still can get better and still have made that a much easier game on myself than it was. And that's just... Feels good that way, so holy crap, 35 minute chess video. I'm really sorry, guys. I guess it was just a good game, right? The longer the video, the better the game. Is that the way this is going? So anyway, guys, thank you all for watching. Sorry about that, uh, that duration, but take it easy. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and uh, I will catch you later. Peace, guys.